This is the all new Fedora 43 and this new version comes absolutely packed with stunning updates. We are talking GNOME 49 which comes with a fresh lineup of new default applications, a batch of performance improvements from compressed init RD for faster bootups to a newer performance tuned Linux kernel with faster read write speeds and better scheduling performance. Yeah, there's a lot happening with Fedora 43. I've been playing with Fedora 43 ever since the beta version dropped and this just feels more well put together, tighter than ever before. In this video, we are unpacking everything, GNOME 49's big moves, Plasma 6.4 upgrades, the RPM security boost, installer improvements and we'll also have a quick look at the new apps that we are getting here. Let's jump right in. One of the biggest updates in Fedora 43 is the all new GNOME 49 and this is a massive update that brings a whole new suite of apps, UI touchups and some underground changes. The new GNOME 49 was actually planned to go Wayland only. The original plan was to completely remove the X11 session and streamline the whole desktop experience. But in a surprise twist, the final GNOME 49 release re-enabled X11 on the login screen and other distros such as Ubuntu are following GNOME's decision. But Fedora 43 goes according to its own plan and completely removes the X11 session. So with this release, we are getting an even more streamlined, even more cohesive and Wayland only in the new GNOME 49 here. Now I understand that many Linux applications and popular ones at that are still using X11, but that's not an issue as those apps will continue working here using X Wayland compatibility. And while Intel and AMD graphics cards work fine on Wayland since a long time, even Nvidia has started playing nice with Wayland now and it's all surprisingly usable. But the star of the show, or stars of the show, is GNOME 49 swapping out several long-standing default applications for a modern lineup. The old eye of GNOME image viewer is replaced by Lupe, a powerhouse viewer built in Rust with GPU acceleration. The default movie player Totem is replaced by Showtime. This is really cool. I really love the new video viewer. This is very modern with its borderless windows and all that stuff. And the document viewer Evans is replaced by Papers. As part of this modern refresh, GNOME 49 swaps out the old dev help tool for a brand new manuals app. It's a turbocharged replacement using SQLite for lightning fast searches and finding docs across your system and flat packs. Beyond the new apps, GNOME 49 also brings a ton of quality of life improvements. The lock screen gets a major upgrade, now featuring media playback controls so you can manage your music without even unlocking your session. Application permissions have been fine tuned. The search in file manager has been tweaked up. All in all, the new Fedora is coming with a refreshed desktop experience thanks to the new GNOME 49. The Fedora KDE Plasma Edition 2 gets a version bump up to the brand new KDE Plasma 6.4. Plasma 6.4 is a serious update that has some cool new things. First of all, the screenshot and screen recording tool Spectacle has received a major user interface redesign. It has been completely rebuilt to simplify your screen recording and screen capture workflows. And now you directly just jump in when you press the print screen button. You need not go through all the selection and stuff. It directly jumps into rectangular window selection mode. And even annotating and sharing these screenshots and screen recordings is very easy now. And for people with HDR screens, Plasma 6.4 introduces the HDR Calibration Wizard. For creative professionals and display enthusiasts, this is a huge news because this gives you the tools for pro-level screen calibration and to get the best out of your HDR screens. Plasma 6.4 is all about polishing touches here and there. Whenever any application goes full screen, whether you're gaming or in a presentation, the system automatically jumps into automatic do not disturb mode where notifications don't pop up on your screen. How cool is that? This makes you wonder why it's not the default everywhere. The application menu here adds a neat little new tag next to newly installed apps so you can easily spot what's fresh. That's good. And Kerana, the do everything launcher utility here gets improved and now it can even show visual previews of color codes. This is a fantastic touch for designers. Speaking of colors, the default breeze theme has been subtly darkened and the desktop background darkens when an authentication prompt appears, helping you focus on the task at hand. One final thing to note, while the main Fedora workstation GNOME version has dropped the X11 version completely, KD developers are still keeping it on. However, it's not pre-installed. You have to install it manually if you want to use it. Okay, under the hood, Fedora 43 is powered by the brand new Linux kernel 6.17. This update brings a wave of performance optimizations, energy efficiency improvements, and enhanced security hardening across the board. 
It also massively improves the hardware support with updated drivers for latest CPUs, GPUs and other platform features baked right in. This includes initial drivers for Intel's upcoming Wildcat Lake processors and enabled drivers for Intel Xeon 3 graphics. For Team Red, AMD Hardware Feedback Interface or HFI has been merged which helps kernel schedulers work more efficiently on CPUs with heterogeneous cores. And there has been a huge BTRFS performance boost. And since BTRFS is Fedora's default file system, this is a big one. The new kernel delivers performance improvements, enhancing throughput and reducing latency for file operations. Now you won't actually feel it, but you gotta trust me on this. With F43, you are getting a snappier system. This kernel also includes a new critical security framework called Attack Vector Controls and this is brought in to mitigate major CPU security vulnerabilities. You know things like Spectre and Meltdown. So this is actually big from a security point of view. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Another huge update in Fedora 43 is the shift to RPM 6.0, the core package management system's first major version bump in years. The most important thing here is the enforcement of PGP signature checking by default for all package operations. This change makes sure that every package installed on a system has been cryptographically verified, dramatically reducing the risk of tampered or malicious packages making their way onto your system. RPM 6.0 enhances open PGP integration and supports multiple cryptographic signatures per package, strengthening package security and verification. For developers and system administrators, RPM 6.0 introduces new capabilities that streamline package management workflows while maintaining robust security. The update includes enhanced debugging features, making it easier to diagnose and resolve packaging issues. These improvements, combined with the security enhancements, make RPM 3.0 a foundational upgrade that quietly but significantly strengthens Fedora's entire software ecosystem. Fedora 43 is now using Z standard compression for the initial RAM init RD by default. In plain English, we are talking about marginally faster boot times and even a smaller memory footprint right at startup. By using the modern and super fast Z standard algorithm to compress files needed during boot, your system can load everything it needs much more quickly. It's a simple chain that delivers a snappier startup experience and you'll appreciate it every single time you turn on your machine. Of course, this is going to be more noticeable on older hardware. On modern SSDs, the difference won't be that perceivable. In the last version of Fedora, that is Fedora 42, we got our first glimpse at the new Anaconda Web UI installer, which I personally absolutely love. With it, installing Fedora is what? A three step process? In this version, the Anaconda Web UI installer gets even better. Firstly, now it is the default for all Fedora spins, whether it's for installing the KD Plasma Desktop, XFC, or any other spin. You'll get the same polished and user friendly installation experience. The installer itself now uses DNF5 for all RPM package installations. The last one used DNF4. DNF5 gives you better performance and the entire thing feels faster and more efficient during the installation process. Then, for modern systems, the installer now enforces the use of GPT partition table for all UEFI based installations and support for the clunky old MBR partition disk in UEFI mode is now removed. And the entire installation process also benefits from the system-wide upgrade to RPM 6.0. This means stronger security right from the start, with features like enforced PGP signature checking, hardening the software supply chain before you even boot into your new desktop. You know, Fedora has really hit a masterstroke with its web UI installer. The whole process is very linear and the installation process itself is so compact. I repeatedly find myself surprised by how concise the whole thing is. I forgot to talk about the main thing. When you start Fedora 43 for the first time, it greets you with this new default wallpaper. And this one is an absolute stunner. This wallpaper honors astronaut Sally Ride and brings a downright fantastic look to the desktop. In addition, we get a curated set of new wallpapers from the GNOME team as well. And those are pretty cool too. By the way, Fedora 43 is switching the format of all default background images from PNG to JPEG XL. This drastically cuts down on file sizes while preserving visual quality and the GNOME compositor Mutter itself has been updated to support 10, 12 and 16-bit wallpapers. 
and this lets you have way richer, more accurate and more vibrant colors on your desktop, especially as we move to the world of HDR wallpapers. Love the work done here. Fedora 43 as a new release brings fresh new packages which deliver the latest and greatest from all the software, libraries and tool chains right to your desktop. In addition to the updates that we already saw, there are a ton of important updates. We are getting GCC 15.2, LLVM 21, Python 3.14 and Java 25. A new Java 25 Open JDK package is introduced as Fedora moves away from the concept of a single system JDK. And this offers more flexibility in my opinion. And to keep the system itself lean, Fedora 43 is also doing some housekeeping. Several unmaintained and obsolete packages are being retired including Python Nose Test Runner and the old GTK Rust bindings. So yeah, you can expect a more contemporary experience out of the new Fedora. Alright, that was Fedora 43 and everything new and improved and changed in it. I feel that this version of Fedora maintains that balance of bringing new things and staying familiar at the same time. I'm really interested in playing now with the new apps, especially Showtime Video Player. It really amazed me. Which Fedora 43 feature did you like the most? Tell me in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is the next text, signing out.